This is Twit. And that brings us to the email of the week. Oh, yeah. And this week's email of the week comes from the far up north. Um, hopefully not the burning up north, but uh, yeah. Stephen Cedrone writes in from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Hopefully everything's safe there. Oh, geez, don't get me started on the hate on the smoke in New York. Although I know it's nothing compared to the West Coast. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, so Stephen writes in from Canada and says, I got a Pixel 7a to replace my Pixel 5. Not because I needed it. But because with the security updates ending this October on my Pixel 5 and the deals going on right now, I thought I'd snap one up. It wasn't just a sale price, but I also got a free Pixel A earbuds, which I then promptly sold on Facebook Marketplace <laughs> because I didn't need them. That for, this further reduced the price of my phone. Heck yeah. Great strategy. Annuity. Love it. Yeah. Um, so Steven says, overall, I'm really happy with it. I did notice there are a lot of bugs in the Google version of Android on it that don't exist in other AOSP versions uh, of Android, like Graphene OS. These would include apps not loading, freeing, crashing, and I would notice a lot more call drops with 5G enabled versus 4G LTE. And I'm in a heavily saturated 5G area with lots of coverage. This doesn't happen on the AOSP version of Android when traveling in the same areas, so perhaps Google messed something up with their, with their modem code. I always load Graphene OS, and then I add the Google Play Services framework on top because I find I get a far better battery life out of my Pixel phones with Graphene because it sandboxes the Google Play Services and Google Play Framework, so drastically cuts down on all the telemetry going back to Google. Mm. I have confirmed this with Wireshark sniffing, what is coming out of the phone on my network, and there's a lot of background information going back to Google on the stock OS that ships with these. That said, with the stock OS, I can get down about 30% charge after my day of actively being on the phone. With Graphene loaded, I get down to about 58%, so you can see a huge difference wow. eliminating the Google telemetry. And Stephen, this is not only email of the week, this is like email of the month. This is like mind blowing, right? <laughs> so for, for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, um, Graphene OS, uh, you can find it at grapheneos.org. And it is a private and secure mobile operating system with Android app capability. And it is developed as a nonprofit open source project. Um, so as you can clearly see here, what it is, is it, it's, it's a mobile OS that sandboxes Android and allows you to still have the Android experience and use Android apps, but allows you to have a little more um, security around what data is coming out of your phone and what, you know, and how often you're using it, that sort of thing. Um, and this was actually formally, and, and I, I hadn't heard of Graphene, but I did hear of its predecessor. Uh, this this actually started back in 2014 and it was known as Copperhead OS. And Jason, well, do you remember right. Copperhead OS? Yes. We talked about that, right? Yeah, yeah. we did. Absolutely. Yeah. At one yeah, time, I, I think we we're going to have someone from Copperhead on the show. We may have even, we did, we did. I think Episode we did. 279. We did. There we go. Um, Gina Trapani There's, joined us and also James Donaldson, CEO of Copperhead at the time. There we yeah, go. there are some things, um, the, the sandboxing has more to do with the privileges and permissions that are granted to Google Play. So um, this is, Graphene OS is Android. It's not like a like it's, you're not right. like running Android in a in a virtual machine or anything. It is right. Android. Right. It is AOSP, and it's just a more secure version of it with like a bunch of security features and implementations and features added on top of AOSP. Um, the modem code, though, that's still the same modem code from Google. Like Graphene OS isn't actually modifying the modem code like in the Tensor processor or anything like that. So that's still the same modem code. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of curious how it's less. Like some of the bugs that you had with apps freezing, not loading, and crashing, that's kind of curious to me because I don't think, I can't imagine Graphene OS would significantly change that aspect of just using day to day apps. But, uh, you know, that is your experience. So I can't really say, you know, mm -hmm. that's not what you're experiencing. But right. yeah, if you are the kind of person who wants the most secure, you know, experience with your device, then definitely. It, this is one of the options to consider to to install on your device. Well, what, what but for I, most what users, I think is, what I think yeah, is yeah. interesting though, Michelle, though, is it's it's there's one corner of the world which is like security conscious and like I don't want my data going and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But um, what uh, what Stephen's argument here is making is that he's saving like thirty percent of his battery on a day to day basis by limiting that telemetry go uh, and all that data going out there. So if you yeah. if you are battery conscious, this could be an option too. So. So there is an aspect to it. Yeah, it is well known that if you just install Android from source without Google Apps, you can save a lot of battery life because those Google Apps 
do a lot of heavy lifting they're doing a and lot not of just telemetry, the but scenes. Yeah, they do a lot of stuff with like push notifications, yeah. location services, and all these other things that apps rely on. And when you get rid of all that, all of a sudden, you know, a lot of that stuff doesn't work, but you save a lot of battery life. And I mean a lot of battery life in the process. Mm -hmm. So the Sandbox Google Play services that is um, implemented as an optional add-on in Graphene OS, um, it allows you to use Google Apps and a lot of APIs that are provided by Google Apps, but not everything is working. Like like Android Auto, wow. for example, doesn't work with Sandbox Google Apps. So maybe G there's some Google aspects, Pay probably doesn't some of that work. going on. Like <laughs> some of the stuff that isn't working maybe is like yeah. really battery heavy. And because that stuff isn't working with the sandbox implementation, maybe that's why the battery life is significantly improved in this person's experience. Or it could be because of the telemetry. Like there is telemetry being collected by Google Apps, you know, for analytics purposes, for, you know, improving the updates or tracking, you know, what users are using, what features and so on. Maybe that is contributing significantly to battery life. Like I personally don't think that's a big contributor. It's probably the push notifications, the location access, and all those other things. So, um, I mean, yeah, all if you above. do install, yeah, all of the above. The, it's it's really hard to pin down what exactly is draining the battery on such a you know complex OS as Android. All the kind of things that are going on in it. But yeah. if you do install something like this and you experience better battery life, you know, more power to you. Well, that's it. That's yet another, that's another nice benefit on top of what probably most people are using Graphene OS for, which is the privacy and the security aspect right. of it. Being able to sandbox things, being able to kind of control what's happening uh, from a data perspective um, when it, when, you know, when that happens and that sort of stuff. Getting the battery improvements is, you know, obviously, I think for most people, that's probably a secondary benefit. Um, but I've not used Graphene OS. I'm, I'm certainly curious about it. So that's why when I saw this email, I thought, oh, great opportunity to kind of shine a light on it. I know we've talked about it in the past um, at times, but and I'm assuming that there is no Google Pay on something like Graphene OS, right? Because it that's like from a security standpoint, that's an API that is really rigid as far as Google is concerned. So, but I, but I don't have the, the data points to know this specifically. Um, oh no, actually. Okay. Cousin Uja in our discord posted. <laughs> well, all I have is a, a subreddit clip from the Graphene OS subreddit that says, uh, Google Pay does not and likely never will work for NFC payments on Graphene OS because Google chose not to allow it to work on any operating systems that they have not explicitly whitelisted and they won't whitelist graphene OS. That may, I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that makes sense. So, so there are certain things that you don't get, uh, certain conveniences that you don't get, but as we know in the world of security, convenience and security don't always travel together. Usually if you have a high, a higher security, uh, things are less convenient. And so there's a reason for that. So there you go. But yes, Stephen, congratulations. I'll let Ron do the honors of closing. It is the email of the week. <laughs> I don't want to steal yeah. that from you. It's your opportunity to get the, the music after you speak. Appreciate it. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor-in-chief of Ad Astra Magazine. And each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time. <laughs>